Hello and welcome to Behind the Bands. My name is Zephra Green. And I'm Colin Hammonds. We are joined today by Nathan Kress, a singer, songwriter, actor, and filmmaker. It's great to have you here with us. Uh, we're going to start things off with a song called Let Go. So let's take a listen. Let's go, no, we'll talk your show Let go, I know, you can't show Let go, let go, we'll fly, no Let go, let go, let go, let go Let go, let go, we'll fly, no Let go, let go, let go, let go Let's go, let go, that's how I know we'll fly, I know. Let go, let go, we'll fly, I know. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go, we'll fly, I know. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go, we'll fly, I know. Let go, let go, let go, let go. And that was a great song there. So, Nathan, tell us, what does that song mean to you? Uh, for me, it's just about uh, letting go all the things that hold you down in life and um, just trying to set yourself up for success, you know, and the, don't dwell on those things and just let them go, you know. So, uh, coming back to your life, uh, how did you get started in music? I started out of college a band called uh, Sweetwater. Uh, we were... Um, Pretty southern rock. Uh, some, some one person um, said said psychedelic folk. I, I liked that description. I think that was fairly accurate. Um, and then after that band, I started a band called Bonafide Villains. We were all original. We did indie rock and like blues and funk um, and just a little bit of everything. Really, we recorded with a band called Other Lives out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. That was they are on the same label as like Beck and Radiohead and. So they had all this really good equipment and things and like plugins that they got from Beck's drummer that we used on the album. Um, and uh, then after that, I started this short little, uh, well, short-lived um, project called Bluestone Funk. And then um, just started doing a solo thing, and that's what I've been doing since. That's quite a bit that you mentioned there with quite a mix of genres, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned mostly playing acoustic guitar. Are there any other instruments that you play? Oh yeah, I played lead guitar in, in Sweetwater and in Bonafide Villains. And I play on my, my own albums too. Um, uh, but you know, I, I, I also play keys a little bit. I played keys uh, for the first time in a song called Live It Up on my new album, The Space Between. It's the first song I ever wrote on the keys before, but... Uh, that's awesome. We added a lot of keys to that album, actually, my, my producer did. I, I, I played all the keys on that song, but he played the rest. But we did, we did add a good amount of key, keys to yeah. that album. Sweet. Well, we're going to go ahead and dive into our next song. So here's What You See. Wrong, take flight, 
dancing sun I know where to go I snow takes a way to be where you see that's be all I be way to go way to show We see what to do. Never know your bow. Never be swashy. 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 And we're back with Nathan Kress. Can you tell us a little bit of the history about that song we just listened to, What You See? Well, I actually, I play that song in a film that should be out this year called Carnation from this uh, Australian filmmaker who's won awards at like Sundance and Cannes uh, and big, really big film festivals. Uh, he just had me kind of, he just uh, told me what the character was and everything. There wasn't a script though. He just had me kind of improvise a couple of scenes and play the song, uh, which was fun. Um, but it's it's sort of about being like, don't just be what you see, try to be something better, sort of with what I feel like the meaning of that song is. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's really cool. I think, uh, I think that song has a very unique sound. Uh, so how would you describe your style of music? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I have like, my favorites are like, my favorite solo artists, artists are like Bob Dylan, like um, Bob Seger, even Tom Petty, for sure. Um, and then, but you know, like musically, when I was in those bands playing lead guitar, I was probably more influenced by like Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers a lot. Uh, I had a love for funk. I don't play it as much as I used to, but uh, yeah. And I guess that all shaped a lot of the sound of those bands. Nice. Nice, yeah. Now the next song of yours that we're gonna take a listen to is called Universe City. Yes. Can you give us a little bit of like an origin story or a backstory yeah. of how that song came to be? To, for the most part, it's about Oklahoma City, where I live and have lived since college. Um, but it's main, It's also about other cities I used to play music in, so I just kind of call it Universe City to be universal and be like sort of about all those cities. Um, I used to travel quite a bit. Uh, I, I would uh, drive, but I'd actually fly a lot too because I had a lot of flight credits and things built up. Um, and um, just sort of like go from like LA to like Chicago to. Um, wherever, uh, like Florida and things, places like that. Uh, but, um, so it's sort of a universal thing. Like to me, it's just, just about, it's an every city thing, but a lot of it is about Oklahoma City, I would say. I think that's a great title. Um, so let's hear the song. Here's Universe City. i 
And that was a great song, and now we're back here with Nathan. So I am wondering, Nathan, what does the songwriting process look like for you? Well, like, I usually just try to start with a piece of music, whether it's a chord progression or a riff or whatever it is. Um, I don't like to think about it a lot at that point. I just I think, is that interesting sounding, you know, is that worthy of doing something with? And then I try to take another piece that sort of contrasts or goes with that um, as, you know, the verses. Usually, usually that ends up being the chorus, the first thing, and then the verses are usually the next thing. Um, I, so it'd be like I'll make a central theme or something. Some songs I have don't really mean much, but, you know, for the most part, I come up with a central theme, and then I sort of come up, try to come up with lines to support that. Of course, some lines you're just, you know, making rhyme just because you have to, but... Uh, you know, I like to put some meaning into into most of my songs just because I feel like it's it just is more meaningful that way. It just means more. It just um, comes out better. And then I come up with a bridge, whether it's a solo or a different, just a different another third section. And then I start thinking about the intros and the outros if I want to do anything different there too. All right, uh, you make it sound so easy. Um, and I know that a lot of artists use their life experiences to influence their art. So what life experiences go into your songs? I try to put all of them into my songs. I try to make uh, my songs. At first, I used to just pick things that were very meaningful to me. Um, but then, you know, you got to think about other people that are listening to your music. And then what, thing, you know, what things that we all go through and things like that are sort of, sort of the higher topics that a lot of times you go towards. Um, but what again was your question? I'm sorry. Like, uh, like what life experiences? Life experiences. Go into your, oh, your well, music. like I say, like all of them, I, I try to. I, I grew up extremely poor here in the Forest area in Columbus and Miami, mostly, and outside of Miami, um, and in Tulsa, and then later in Dallas and other places. But uh, for the most part, I've been living in Oklahoma City since then. But um, my dad became disabled and uh, I had to kind of like help out with working with the uh, construction company we had and then some other construction jobs that I had on the side. And I also put, my, I put myself through college and um, undergrad and grad school and became like a scientist and engineer. And so for like three or four years I did music full time. Um, didn't make much money with it obviously, but it was fun, you know, but it's kind of like when you do that, it sort of takes some of the fun out of it. So it's like, I don't know. I like doing it um, on my own time, and like uh, I know I have friends that make movies and things, and they're always asking, you know, wanting cues and things, musical cues and things, which I, I like to do as well. Um, but I try to put everything I can in there, like all, any life experience. Um, I mean, I, I rode a, I rode a bicycle across the United States from San Francisco to Washington D.C. to help uh, raise funds and awareness of people with disabilities. Um, I've had actually medical conditions myself over the years that uh, kept me away from working. All I had was my music for a while, you know, and so um, it's, it means a lot to me. It means everything to me, really, but um, I try to put a lot of life experience into, into, my, into my work. That is good. Yeah, that's great. Um, now, our next song coming up is called I Am The Best, and from that answer you just gave, it kind of sounds like, again, with all your life experiences and everything like that, you but give 110% to everything that you do. So can you give us a little bit of insight about this song, I Am The Best, yeah. coming up? I, I feel like it was just like, it's like a way of like psyching yourself into succeeding, you know, like saying I'm the best version I can be out of every possibility that could happen, every, you know, decision you can make in your life. I like to believe that I'm living my best life and that I'm making the best decisions I possibly can. Um, and so that's kind of what that one's about to me. Um, just setting the bar a little higher and just trying to trying to um, to get there, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean, life's all about. Just man. saying, you know, I'm, I'm the best. Maybe maybe you're not really feeling the best that day, but then after you you say it a few times, you do feel like you're you know living your best life. That's what I like to think I'm doing. That's what it's all about. Well, here it is. I am the best. Mission life, 
seems so easy Never breathe, that was the reason I am the best I am the best I am the best version of me Seven Racing on hamster wheel, hills numb without any feel. But I do find the rest. It's clear now that I am the best. I am the best. I am the best. I am the best version of me. Wow, uh, I love the message of this song. It's like no matter where we go, we should do our best to be our best. Um, you go, you go a lot of places to perform, I would imagine. And when we communicated before, you uh, mentioned liking performing at festivals. So, mm -hmm. what is, uh, what is it that you like most about that? Um, it's just fun to um, play your own original music and have people enjoy it. Um, I played like. The second band I started, we did a lot of covers and things. I didn't really like that because it was like, are they here for the covers? Are they here for our music? I wanted to know, so I had to start my own original band. Mm -hmm. And I mainly do original stuff with my solos, but I also play, I, I, I mean, I play covers too. You kind of have to to get paid. It's sort of the way it is. It just depends. You have to either put up a very big investment of trying to get people at your shows and things uh, with your solo stuff, or you just have to kind of like, do what they want you to do, which a lot of times turns into like some cover songs and things like that, which I don't, not my favorite things to do, like three or four hour sets of those. I like to rather build a bill and just sort of play more of my own stuff. Okay. And now you mentioned earlier in the interview that you did have a stint in your past where you were doing music full time for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you hope to get back to or is music I, primarily a I passion project? I would like project? to, um, but unfortunately my wife passed away four months ago and uh, I'm very limited in that space right now. So it's like, I can still play like breweries and things. I can bring the kids to, there's not the bar thing there, you know, it's, um, or like festivals and things. I put them on like the side of the stage or in front of me. I've done that before, you know, that's not a big deal, but like, I can't exactly travel around a lot anymore right now. Um, at least for the, you know, for right now, um, because it's just such a big life change, you know, and, uh, I got to watch them, obviously, and uh, I don't have any family at all in Oklahoma City. It's like they're all in Florida now, so I have a lot of family in like California and Florida and then back in Kansas. Just what bands inspire Just what inspire bands you. inspire me. Oh, and um, I mean, I, I am inspired by newer, newer bands. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I like Jack White a lot. I like... Um, I like a little bit of everything to be honest. It really just depends on the mood that I'm in. That's kind of the music I listen to, whatever mood I'm in. But that's kind of, to be honest, that's what I do. Well, speaking of accomplishments, achievements, band inspirations, childhood heroes, things like that, I think it's time we rewind the clock and take a listen to When We Were Young. Why can't we 
just go back when, way back when I see you again. Now every day is just the same. Somehow flavor turn into plain. When we were young, when we were young, we'll come. That song there has a large sense of nostalgia with it. Uh, is that what you're going for with that song? Or what's the story yeah. or origin of this one here? I mean, basically, it was just disenchantment of growing older and just thinking, like, when you're younger, how much things were new and fun and interesting. Um, I guess that's what I was going with that one. I mean, it's one of the first ones I wrote uh, myself, I think, back when I was in Bonafide Villains. I was started write, I wrote that one and then Lost and then uh, one more. Um, I tried to write with him at that, the singer there, but uh, it didn't really work out so well. But it depends. You just have to mesh with people, or you, you either do or you don't. Uh, that makes sense. Um, your IMDb uh, also states that you are an actor and a filmmaker. So how do those influence your music career? Well, I, I mean, I feel like the, the, the music sort of influenced it in a way, because that's so the music came first. and. Um, I used my music in the first film I made. I won uh, Best Song in a Film at LA Cinefest in LA. I was nominated for Best Score. We won Best uh, Thriller at Minefield Film Festival in LA. And then uh, we were Hollywood Screening semi-finalist, Miami Independent Film Festival in Florida, Official Selection, and Eye Catcher, and a few others, I think. Um, so I like. I was very happy with that, obviously. You know, I, didn't, I didn't even expect that they would nominate me for those kind of awards, but that was really cool to be recognized in that way. And I just feel like if you're into that, you want to try those kind of things, you just got to kind of make your own way these days. I mean, it's um, film and TV production is down about 40% overall in the major stuff, but like that's just good news for the independent stuff because you have more of a shot of like getting it sold and getting it seen. Um, but yeah, I've had some stuff out on streaming. I had my own Roku channel for a while where I put music on, on Roku uh, and on Amazon Prime. I had a music video on there for a while and that, that movie, uh, Many Worlds. But I don't, I do actually now, I start thinking of like lines or themes or things that like I think to myself, would this go in a film or what kind of a film would go in? You know, those, that, those things do go through my mind. Yeah. So I guess it has also influenced the music. That makes sense. I, I, a lot of stuff in the new album I like a lot that I, I was like, when I was talking about producers we were making, I was like, that, I, I was like oh, that sounds like it could be in a Wes Anderson movie, so I like that kind of a, a, for that particular song, I liked that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of sticking with the theme of the filmmaking and acting and everything like that, uh, you might have just answered this question a little bit, um, but have you scored one of your own films yourself yeah, already? Yeah, I did. I did score that one. That was nominated for Best Score at nice. Cinefest. Um, okay. For many worlds, yeah, it was a 
about a um, quantum physics professor starts receiving visions of future events, and it was actually a pandemic, which was set in 2020. I wrote it in like 2015. Oh. And it, the pandemic that was set in 2020, I was like, that was really weird. Like, yeah, that might be I was after. like, if I don't want to do that again, like make another premonition <laughs> yeah. if that's true. But yeah, I was like, that's a very weird coincidence that that happened. But. Yeah, um, well, that is a, a quite a list of exciting accomplishments. Uh, before we wrap things up here, uh, please tell us about uh, the final song we'll be hearing today. Um, it's called Lost, uh, oh. because although I know it's a very sensitive topic, I think it can help a lot of people with uh, similar yeah. feelings. Yeah, uh, my wife, like I said, passed away four months ago. I, I wrote the song back when we were dating because um, I felt like I was kind of lost without her. and. Um, I still feel that way now, obviously being without her again, but um, uh, I don't know, I mean, just, um, that's what it's about, I don't, it's kind of a, a sensitive topic, obviously, uh, um, but um, I just sort of wrote it as a tribute to her because I felt like she really helped me through some like really dark times in my life, the worst times at that point until she died, obviously it's just been mm -hmm. much worse, but uh, and so, you know, I just, I sort of wrote that as a tribute to her, like her, her, her and her personality, what a good person she was. Yeah, well, that, that's very nice. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing this with us. Yeah, we appreciate you for sharing that with us, your story with us, and we appreciate you for just coming on the show today. Um, now is your chance. I believe it's right over in that camera. You get to plug your socials and tell everyone where we get to go find you and your music. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm on IMDb is Nathan J. Kress, K-R-E-S-S, -S, uh, NathanKressMusic.com. I got a website. I'm on, like, Facebook and uh, I think Instagram and the other ones. All right, this has been Beyond, Behind the Bands uh, with our guest, Nathan Kress. I'm your host, Sephra Green. And I'm Colin Hammonds. We will leave you tonight with the final song. Here is Lost. Missing. 